When you look at cover crops, there, there are some good pros on, involved with it, but there's also some cons. There can be some issues with cover crops. And a lot of times people don't get enough information uh, and they, they run into a problem with the cover crop because they're not experienced. So we normally talk about if you're going to do cover crops, we, you get as much information, you talk with people, you go to meetings and get, get that information. Pro-wise, we can select a cover crop to try and correct some issues you have in your field. Many of the fields have severe compaction problems. Uh, in, this, in the fall, you may notice after heavy rains after the crops harvest, you get standing water. That standing water may be due to some issue in the soil, like maybe the so soil's compacted. And your cover crops can help alleviate that. If you have problems with crusting on soils, there's a lot of cover crops that can be utilized to help break down that, that crusting. Um, we see as we use a cover crop to improve those conditions, then frequently we'll start getting yield increases in the field. Uh, some of the cover crops are well known for increasing yields. Hairy vetch has been used, it's a, it's a high management cover crop, but from the research that was done at the U University of Illinois uh, Dixon Spring Center, they found that utilizing hairy vetch almost always increases yields. But the cons behind that is with hairy vetch, it gets big, it gets thick, it gets matted, and it takes a person that's really willing to work with their planter set it up properly, get it planted on time, and, and, get the, and killed on time so you can get your corn crop up. Uh, same way with most of the cover crops, you have to know when to control that cover crop in the spring if you're gonna allow the cover crop to remain green in the spring. So the oats and radish that we used before, that's a simple way to start because everything's clean and ready to go in the spring. But as we start adding the other cover crops to get more benefits, more soil improvement, more organic matter buildup, more carbon sequestered, more nitrogen sequestered to utilize for the next year, then we run into the issue we gotta manage them in the spring. It takes planning, you gotta be prepared, you gotta be able to have someone out there to control the cover crop when it needs to be controlled, and you need to be able to plant your, your field crop when you need to get it planted. So all of those things take management that you gotta look ahead on. If you let a cover crop get out of hand, there are ways to, to work with that, but some folks don't have the experience. And with, when you don't have the experience, then you can get into trouble really quick. Um, if you see a, a cereal rye crop that somebody didn't spray early and it's seven feet tall, it's not that hard to plan into if you know how to do it. But if you've never done it before, it's, an un, it's a real daunting task. So you can lose your soil moisture you can have a hard time getting a stand of your corn or soybeans that you're going to plant into it. It takes experience. It takes time to learn. That's why we recommend folks start small. 25, 40 acres, 50 acres at the most to work with a cover crop initially. Once you figure out your management system, what you're capable of, then you expand it to more acres if you, if you need to and, and as you see fit. Then you can start looking at combinations of cover crops. We find when we start combining three, four, five, eight different cover crops into one, we see some increased soil biological activity. We see an increased uh, nutrient sequestration. We also see allelopathic effects on controlling problem weeds. And we also now have to start looking at how do we manage every one of those species if they're all alive in the spring? Because all seven or eight of them may require a different herbicide or different combinations. So that's something that you got to plan ahead for, uh, otherwise you can have a real, real problem. So that's a definite con. But we've got a lot of data out there. We've seen lots of research done. Um, we've got a lot of commercial companies now doing research that are showing significant yield increases when we do the cover crop right. But if you do it wrong and you don't control it, you don't manage it properly, it can hurt you. It can reduce your yields. So it does take planning ahead. It does take some experience in order to do it, and you gotta expand slowly, not fast.